Why do you do it? Uh, I do it because sure there's a part of me that enjoys it like it's it's enjoyable to be desired by another person like that that's that is exciting it's exciting when a new person uh finds you desirable and sexually attractive um but also because it excites you it gets you like i don't there have been women that i have found attractive but they weren't they weren't excited about you and so that just absolutely killed my excitement for them welcome to the open bedroom podcast i'm your host jennifer kalo welcome to conversations about open relationships online dating conscious uncoupling and creating the relationship that truly aligns for you Hey guys, welcome back to the Open Bedroom Podcast. Today I have my partner Scott on, and today we are revealing all about why we only date women. This podcast episode has been coming for a long time. I get a lot of requests and a lot of questions to further explain why we don't have extra men in our relationship. So Scott, do you want to say hi to our listeners? Maybe some new ones have never heard of you before or heard from you. I know you think you've got about three episodes now on the podcast, but floor is yours. Uh, thanks. Hi, I'm Scott. I'm I live with Jen, uh, and we do we uh, do living stuff together, um, and a, have a a couple of girlfriends who occasionally join in with us. Um, and I apologize for the lighting. My desk setup has the the sun sunshine outside right behind me so it kind of washes everything out if i don't make it otherwise look like a cave in here and so there's the there's the why we don't have men join in with this topic Mm -hmm. and then what was the other topic you mentioned to me in the kitchen today the other one i want to talk about is what do you do when people want to date your partner Oh, but right. not you. And I mean, you as in we, as a couple, how do we yeah. handle when people are interested in not just seems us? like one of us, right? How do we handle yeah. that? So cool. Do gotcha. you want to just kind of jump into our topic of why we only date women? Um, I mean, that's a very, I think that's a, a pretty complicated topic. Um, and it's, it's, it's kind of stigmatized. Like, one thing I found funny or interesting is uh, on one hand, a lot of people turn their noses up at couples that are only interested in dating a single woman or an available woman and avail- a, a woman who uh, dates separately, so to speak. And then at the same time, there are plenty of women who, uh, proudly advertise being unicorns like as for as much as for as much as quote unquote unicorn hunters are stigmatized there are an equal number of women who are happy to identify themselves as unicorns sort of like uh probably like some people stigmatize uh uh bbc lovers while at the same time there are an equal number of people and uh, gentlemen who uh, proudly broadcast their BBC affinity. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, uh, so trying to just get past the uh, that that rash stigma. Why? I mean, this this is a if you just lay that question to me like that, I'm going to spend 30 minutes monologuing here. So maybe, (laughs) maybe give some, some context. Okay. Well, I guess the context to me starts with the, the, the bristling, right? So we have friends Mm -hmm. who say, Jen, it's, it's just not fair. We don't understand why you don't get to have a boyfriend. Scott gets to fuck whatever woman he wants. 
which is in itself not entirely true because we present a unified front, but maybe, maybe we should just start with like, what's our dynamic in your words? And then we can kind of break that apart from there. And like, how do we end up here? Okay. Well, I guess our dynamic, uh, from my perspective is, let me put it a different way. Um, and this is, as I've mentioned to you many times before, I mentioned to just about anybody that we encounter is my, uh, my driving, I hate to use the term rule, but my philosophy or approach is that I only want us to do things that will bring us closer together, which, uh, kind of rules out dating separately because I don't think that that's something that brings us close together. I think that's something that brings us individually closer to other people, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's not what it's, I don't think it's why we're doing this, or at least in my mind, it, for my part, that's not why I'm okay with uh with having an open relationship a semi-open relationship as i like to put it i only want us to do things that bring us closer together um and and then what we've found works well because we've tried kind of dating another couple before and then jen kind of started dating another couple on her own before uh a couple that did not really want me involved and it caused some division between us mm -hmm. um but it for one there are a lot of complications there's a lot of complexities when you've got another couple involved because they're it's like the number of of cross connections that need to the number of compatibilities that are required grows exponentially when you add a fourth person as opposed to say just one other person in between us mm -hmm. um there are so many other considerations to be made because you have two different people and two different sets of feelings and two different uh potentials for jealousy or people being pulled in one direction versus another and we've we've kind of dabbled in that before and maybe not with the best couple for it uh because I don't think that they're intentions their their drivers were quite the same as ours their drivers for for deciding to open up their relationship um but it, it just it, it it didn't work out well like we, it wasn't a situation where everybody was just everything felt good and everybody was just happy with what was going on and feeling satisfied and content on the other hand after uh sharing a few i would say girlfriends now if you uh, we've had we've had a handful of uh, somewhat regular uh, partners that have joined in with us and for one it's so much it's so much easier to to gauge um a mutual attraction or a mutual uh, desire for each other and I don't, I don't know it just, it just works out a lot more easily it's a lot smoother it's a lot easier to to coordinate with one person it's a lot easier to and and it feels at least for me it feels um more connective when it's it's Jen and I working together to uh not only give give this other person a great and pleasurable experience but to also 
uh, share and give each other a pleasurable experience. Um, I don't want to pass Jen off to somebody else and they go do something separately. I mean, like as we've grown closer to a couple of the girlfriends that we've had, you know, occasionally like I'll, we'll, we'll be in the same house and maybe Jen and, and our girlfriend will, you know, go, they'll, they'll, they'll sleep in while I get up to go do some work and they'll, you know, snuggle together and fool around and that's fine, but it's not the same as, okay, well, I'm going to take this guy's wife and go do something with her. And he's going to take my partner and go do something with her. Um, that's just not, that's not what I'm interested in. That's not the sort of shared intimacy. Like I want to share intimacy with Jen. And if we bring another lady in, um, then, and, and, and it's, uh, an equally wonderful experience for her, then that's fantastic. Hey there. Did you know that I do online coaching? Yes, I do online coaching in the sex and relationship space. Some of the topics that are near and dear to my heart are open relationships. So that includes polyamory, swinging, or what we call the lifestyle. I also love conversations around online dating. We're talking Bumble, Tinder, Field, and more. And then the last thing that's really passionate and close to my heart is conscious uncoupling. That means we get to break up with people with love and respect, with dignity and hope. Um, we get to create a life for our children that gets to be a little bit different. We can do things better than we have in the past. So if any of these topics sound interesting to you and you'd love to get some coaching from me, check out the link in the show notes or the link in my bio for more information on coaching with Jen. I think I've been talking for a lot, a, a <laughs> while here, so I'll let you. Well, I mean, the idea here is to get your perspective and I, because I hear mine all the time here on this podcast. So I have a couple other questions for you um, that I'm thinking. So these don't have to be super elaborate. You can feel free to just kind of answer well, as you. Yes, well, if, if I could just say one more thing as to, um, you know, again, going back to the stigma or people who complain, like, you know, Jen's had norm, numerous friends uh you know expressing that's not fair why aren't you dating other men um we've come to this position we've come to this dynamic after months of very in-depth discussion and exploration of our own feelings of what we consider intimacy to be and we have I would say we have, we don't necessarily have the same views on what is intimate, like what is just to be between partners like us as primary partners versus what we share with other people. Um, but we've come to our dynamic after a lot of communication and a lot of very deep uh, exploring exploration of our own feelings and understanding each other's feelings. So when somebody, when some friend or some acquaintance or some rando on a dating app uh, complains, you know, Oh, that's not fair. I don't give a shit. Like <laughs> the last thing I'm interested in is, uh, is pandering to the sensibilities of somebody who's not in our fucking relationship. So the, that, that kind of, that kind of stuff, I mean, I find it amusing when maybe some of Jen's acquaintances, some of her more nosy acquaintances, uh, inject their opinions or judgments onto what we've become comfortable with as a couple. Um, yeah, that's all. <laughs> that's my position on that. Good. Okay, cool. I have a bunch of questions for you. Okay. 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 So I'm going to start with, because this perfectly led to the very beginning. So why are we open to begin with? <laughs> I wrote out, and I think you've shared a couple of times. I wrote this out once, but basically, mm -hmm. and I, I imagine most of your listeners are, are already very familiar with your story, but from my perspective, uh, you know, when we met, you were, you were, 
you, you didn't you didn't recognize it or you didn't acknowledge it to yourself at the time but you were at the tail end of an 8 year completely sexually boring marriage and you had decided you wanted to explore you had not been exploring or realizing your sexuality and had not been um uh pursuing all of the things you were interested in sexually or ex having the experiences you wanted to have. So you decided to open things up and you were, you started dating like you had you were just finding people like matching with people on Tinder. Uh, you were one of them. <laughs> right. And so we matched on there about, I think you said about two weeks in, you had only been doing this for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And um, I won't go into the details, but but pretty quickly, uh, to both your maybe surprise and mine, we decided to become exclusive because we connected really well, and we both, I think, kind of had the uh, the the sentiment that well, we're we're not really that interested in seeing other people like we enjoy seeing each other more than we enjoy seeing anyone else or you seemed to enjoy spending time with me more than you enjoyed spending time with the other guys you were kind of dating um so we just we just decided okay well, we'll just see each other um and and that was that was great for that was great but I also recognized that I had come along when you were right at the beginning of like going on this, uh, I use, I use the, I've used the term sexual amusement park a lot of times, like you had only done a couple of the rides and I didn't want to, I didn't want you to have to like cut off your time at the amusement park and go home, uh, because you happened to meet me so early into your your exploration mm. um but at the same time i was making a substantial emotional investment into you mm -hmm. more than i would say i've made into anybody and so i wanted you to be able to continue exploring your sexuality but if I was going to continue to invest in this relationship, I it needed to be something that was bringing us together and not just sending you off to see if there were better options or see if there was something more, uh, more appealing, um, which sounds, <laughs> that you, sounds you terrible. You know that that's not what it was either. It was, I wanted to try, like I want to do it with you the things. And I think it, at that point I was like, I was hesitant that you were willing to try all the things. Yeah. It and wasn't, I, I mean, was trying to find anyone better than you. It was like, I want to do this and I want to do that. And I want to, and you, and I, and I was like, are you sure you want to do all of this stuff with me? Sure. But I mean, at the time, like that's, that's one way that I perceived it. Cause it's like, Oh, well, if, if you're, if this is good, if, if you're happy with what we have, mm -hmm. then like, why would you want to go look for something else elsewhere? Unless you're just looking for, looking for an upgrade, uh, mm -hmm. which is, which is a, where am I upgrade baby? I, I love you for that. Um, but also, like I said, I just want I wanted I wanted you to be able to have as many as experiences as would be possible within the bounds of us maintaining and growing a relationship. So experience all the things. Well, I mean, all the things is a lot of things mm -hmm. and not all, not all the things are compatible with at least the sort of relationship mm -hmm. that I'm, that I'm comfortable and that I'm, that I'm willing to invest in. Uh, 
which I, I'm maybe sounds restrictive, but everybody has the choice to pursue what feels good for them and what makes them happy. And I want, I hoped that, that we could both, that we would both be compatible in, in what was exciting for us to explore, but what also let us stay, like, let us be, be comfortable and, and happy in our relationship together. Yeah, I had a hard time with this one, like wrapping my mind around the fact that Scott would want to show up with me and all the various ways that I wanted to taste the world. So for example, um, I wanted to go to like a black, a black light club party. I wanted to go to a dungeon. I wanted to go to a sex club. I wanted, and it was, we were creating such a beautiful, what felt like sacred relationship together that I, I remember looking at you that night when we talked about this and I said, that's not a place for us. Like, I don't know mm, that I yeah. want you to be in, see me in that environment or to be, I don't like, I don't want to jeopardize our relationship because we went to a sex club and you just looked at me with this sincere sincereness in your eyes. And you were like, Jen, I want to experience all of that with you. And it took me a moment and I was like, he's serious. Like he really truly wants to experience these things with me for the first time or every time that it's a new experience. And, and that's really beautiful. And I feel so honored and you have done a beautiful job of creating a container for me to play in a container that feels safe, but also expansive at the same time. Well, it's funny you say that um, because I felt, I also felt in a way like you were infantilizing me. And we've talked about this Madonna complex before, like husbands start viewing their wives as this, uh, this pristine chaste figure and they stop wanting to like, like really have mm -hmm. like do wild, dirty stuff with them. And I felt like, well, what is that? So you don't, for the really dirty, you want to keep me here for the nice, like, uh, sensual, safe, massage. Yeah, yeah, sensual, <laughs> sweet sex. But for the really dirty stuff, you want to go do that elsewhere without me involved. Mm. And so I was, I was very put off and I guess a little hurt by that. Yeah. And, that, but then you realized that mm -hmm. immediately, like when you told, like you had been avoiding telling me that you wanted to go do this yeah. um but i'm glad you did because then we had a pretty good conversation about it it's the one and only time i've ever hurt you and been in front of you when i did it and seen the hurt in your eyes and the rejection and i never fucking ever want you to feel that way again it hurt my heart so much to realize how much it hurt you and I feel like from that moment on though, that was it. Like I had at that point broken it off with any of the other people I was seeing. It was just you and me moving forward. At that point, I knew my marriage was over. In fact, I was about to leave for Costa Rica. Scott helped put me on an airplane. And when I came back, my husband was gone. He had moved everything out. And we knew that this was happening. Like it was the week that the week of transition and I wasn't home to be part of the transition, thankfully. And so I knew coming home that Scott was it for me, that he was my person moving forward. And now we've transitioned into this, but do you want to like gloss over any of the, like us really just exclusively being together <laughs> and how that kind of opened back up? Um, well, gloss over would mean not talking about it. Well, okay. But, I don't mean that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, not spend 30 minutes talking about it. Gotcha. Well, also I would say, I think that was, you said that was the only time you've seen me right. express. Yeah, I guess hurt like that. But I mean, you saw, I think you kind of saw that when, when you pretty much outright stated, oh, well. I'm going to go on a date with this couple that I'm friends with mm -hmm. and they just want to date me. And then we had that 
kind of confrontation where I said, okay, well, if, if you want to date them, date them. And I will, I will be, be on, and I'll be on my way. Yeah. Um, you weren't, I didn't see hurt that time. You were fucking angry. Like you mm. showed up pissed, angry. And like, what are you like? Why would you think that this is okay? Uh, if you haven't noticed yet from this conversation, our listeners, like I'm a little dense sometimes. And it takes me a little while to like, really get the concept that like, this is not this is not the game that we're playing. Like this is not the track that we're on. And so sometimes in my mind, and maybe because I had so much freedom in my previous marriage when we opened, because I was in charge of it, right? That was well, like, yeah, because it's a free for all. And Scott's like, oh no, baby, it's not a free for all. Well, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, you're fine. I, I was not uh, interrupted you. Um, yeah, it's because you went from somebody who I won't say didn't have any will but he did not assert his will if he had a will about things he didn't assert it and he he was kind of a kept man and so really you were the one that got to just pursue whatever whim you had right. and then when you became involved with me like well i have no problem asserting my will because and part of that is because I've spent most of my adult life alone and it's just been my will that dictates everything I do. Um, so, so yeah, but at the same time, I think, I think that's something that we both love and find appealing about each other is that we're, we are both willful people and not, uh, we're not easily dominated by by other people's wills and we uh we choose to and joyfully uh embrace each other's uh wills and and drives um i would go as far as to say like it's sexy as fuck and i want it to move into that conversation of mm why not men? Cause this is part of the container that we've created. And what does that container look like? There are guardrails in our relationship. Mm -hmm. I, I don't just go do whatever I want and neither do you. And we've had the opportunities to do that. That's and true. so I would love for you to explain what we've created and why, and maybe even like, how do you keep it in place? Cause every now and then I push against the guardrails a little bit. And I see mm -hmm. how much give there can be. And the Brad in me comes out a little bit. And Scott's like, mm -mm. <laughs> get back in there. <laughs> hey, guys, this is a uh, two-part series. So you just listened to episode 119, Scott Spills Why We Only Date Women. And I am airing this Sunday, episode 120, when they want you, but not your partner. If you really enjoyed this episode, may I please ask you to follow the podcast and also, if you wouldn't mind stopping and rating and reviewing it, 